All right, so for today's big idea is we're going to use Facebook, Facebook for business. We probably all have some experience with Facebook. Full disclosure, early on in the beginning, I have to say, I hate Facebook. I don't like Facebook. I don't like to use it for friends and family. I don't like the, uh, the culture of the creators of Facebook. I don't like the philosophy of Facebook. I don't like Facebook personally. But for business, I love Facebook. For business, it's great. For business, it lets you reach a great audience that really cares, a wide audience. For personal, I don't care about Farmville, I don't care about the Candy Crush uh, invitations, I don't care that everyone's sharing baby pictures on Facebook, I don't care about Facebook personally. But for business, it's very, very useful, as we'll see in this class. And Facebook is also a double-edged sword for business. <coughs> I'll talk about what that means when we get to it. But what we will be doing here is we will create a Facebook account for business. Um, so the first thing we'll do is you can go ahead and open up your web browser. And let's go to this address here, facebook.com slash PMD Interactive. Facebook.com slash PMD Interactive. This again is my company's Facebook presence. We've got one on all of them, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Pinterest, basically on all the networks. And the short answer is that yes, all your business should be on all the networks, or as many of them as you can. But it's difficult. It takes time and effort. I will mention later on today um, a couple of apps that help you manage multiple networks at once because it's cumbersome to log into your Twitter and to log into your Facebook. Well, you can manage it all in one platform, which we'll talk about later. But here at the moment, I just want to show you facebook.com slash PMD Interactive. It might ask you to fill in the security, you know, the letters here for security just to make sure that you're the right, uh, well, I guess this is here for spammers or something. So I'm just going to fill in the letters that I think that I see. And it's going to then show me the uh, facebook.com slash PMD Interactive. So this is our company's uh, Facebook account. And there is a difference between personal and business usage of Facebook. Technically, you use Facebook either as a person or as a business. So I'll be making my notes here, but this is something I mentioned previously on Google+. Facebook profile for personal. Facebook page for business. There is a difference. The quick way to tell the difference is that the personal has friends and that the business has likes. So if your business page that you created or that your friend created for you or that someone else in the business created for you, if your business page is getting friends and friends requests, it's not correct. It's set as a personal account, not a business account. You need to be getting likes on Facebook as a business. If you're a person, you'll have friends, but if you're a business, you have likes. There is a way to fix it, of course. If you created it the wrong way and you've got friends and you need likes instead, it can be fixed, it can be updated. But you want to have a business page for business and a personal profile for personal. So I'll say here, just like Google+, uh, can create multiple business pages from one personal account, personal profile. You can create multiple business pages from one personal. So some email address is required to create a Facebook account. It can be personal, it can be business, doesn't matter. Um, I guess actually technically Facebook wants a personal email address but then from there you can create multiple business ones and you could use a business email and then create multiple business listings but it might not be so obvious I create a, an account it asks me for my email I use my business email I put my company name and I'm ready to go no most likely you created a personal profile and when you click the check mark that says I've read the rules and the terms and conditions of Facebook 
somewhere in there it's buried in there that it says you will create the proper kind of account for the proper entity and if you violate any of those rules technically they can shut it all down so if you've had your personal profile uh, for a business for all of these years and you get caught it could be shut down because you've been violating their terms of service in that you needed a person or you needed a business page for your business so this is what the standard page should look like you've got um, some spot for branding a logo a banner image up here just like Google Plus uh, Twitter you've got over here likes that's what you're going to be looking for you should have likes on your page not friends you might have visits that's going to depend on if you've got a physical location or not so we'll say a Facebook page a business page uh, has likes and it may have visits visits really are only for a location if you have a location if you have a real location set up on the page with a real street address and such people can check in that is someone's on their Facebook app on their device they go to your business they see you on Facebook they click check in the value for of that for a business owner is data collection all of these networks collect so much data we willingly give so much data to these networks age likes demographics all of that information when we use these networks as a person we're giving away so much information to these networks and that's on the one hand for personal maybe an invasion of privacy but for businesses it's a great business opportunity because then I can really target my content to the right demographic such as visits we'll see more of the value of visits later on on a Facebook page we can also have uh, milestones we'll see the different types of posts that we can create and one of the types of posts are milestones something happened as a milestone of your business you can show that off I'm not sure if personal accounts have this but I know business pages have notes which is just their fancy way of saying a blog you can do long form blogs on Facebook now you can write your blogs on Facebook you can write a 500 word blog 1000 word blog you can format it and style it with bold text and links and all of that like a real blog you can do that on Facebook now yes you used to be able to um bring in an RSS feed from mm -hmm. your blog into notes? Is oh, that really? still possible? I'm not sure. I, I Possibly. I never used it personally. It might be there. I'm not sure. But I'm just seeing a lot in the world of, of, of the web and such that RSS isn't as popular as it used to be. It's sort of like, I like to call it Web 1.5. Right now we're dealing with a lot of Web 2.0 sites. Old classic sites were Web 1.0 and in the middle I call them Web 1.5 which is RSS. So I don't see a lot of RSS popularity like I used to. Even Google has given up on it because it doesn't have the Google Reader anymore. So I, I, don't, I don't really think it's that relevant anymore personally. And I haven't really seen too much about it as much anymore. Mm -hmm. Related. Um, so in, in place of that, there are so many apps that developers have created that I could use mm -hmm. to do specific things. One of this just threw up my blog. Um, and I don't do that because I know that developers used to have to ask permission to access your contacts, but I don't think they have to do that anymore. So it's I well. There's a whole world of uh, I know they have an official term, you know, third-party apps. We have these all all these extra apps. You, sometimes they're called tabs. We have all these extra tabs that we can add to our mm -hmm. business page. Um, I usually don't use too many of these for clients. They can get kind of convoluted and difficult to set up and who knows what sort of data leaks are happening and all of that. So I personally don't really use them as much, just the built-in Facebook features.
<laughs> so we'll see the other features of a Facebook page, but you want a business page. Um, you want a business page, not a personal profile. And the big way to see if you did it right is that you get um, likes instead of friends. So what we'll do is we will log into an account and then from there we can create a business page. What you could do if you'd like is create a brand new account completely from scratch. I'm gonna say it's not necessary. I would recommend to use your existing account yes your personal existing account and to it we will add as many business accounts or business pages as we like very much like Google Plus we used some Gmail address to log into Google Plus and then we created business pages we can do the same thing here and just to make it easier that's what I would recommend so here I'm gonna ask you make a decision either create a brand new account here which will take a little too long or simply log in with your existing personal Facebook and then I'll show you we're going to then create business pages and the person that this is attached to none of this information will show up unless you choose for it to show up my personal Victor stuff will not show up on these business pages unless I choose that so don't worry about about that sort of crossing over. So take a moment to take a moment to um, sign in. It most likely will be your personal account. You see here, I hardly log in. Oh, there's eight messages waiting for me. Who cares? I don't use Facebook for personal very much. I much prefer Google Plus and Twitter for personal. But for business, people ask me, uh, businesses ask me, uh, well, which is the one I need to do? The, the, which social network do I need to use? And I tell them, you, you should be on all of them, the big ones at least, the ones I teach in these classes. Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, Pinterest, YouTube, you know, those ones at least. But if you don't have the time or the budget and you want a short answer, you need to be on Facebook. That's a double-edged sword, as we'll see. Let's take a moment. Go ahead and log into your Facebook. Uh, so I've logged into Facebook. It's got my timeline here, all the latest news, etc. It's my personal account. I can tell that because my name is on the top right and there's my picture. This is my this is my personal account. On the top right corner, there's a little black triangle, which I'm sure has an official name, but I'm not sure what it is. If you click the little black triangle at the top right corner of the blue Facebook bar, the main bar, you'll get various items here. And in my case, notice it says your pages. These three and more are the different pages that I manage, along with other people. Uh, these are the pages that my company manages for other businesses. It shows three, three of them at this moment here, but I have C more. Just to show you this, you don't have to do anything yet, but if I go to C more, these are all the different companies that I have access to to manage their Facebook business pages. We will see that like on Google+, we can have multiple managers more than one person can manage this client. Any person, let's say the business owner of this client, or myself, or someone else on my team, someone creates this page, and then can add multiple managers, multiple, multiple administrators. And then anyone can uh, then administer that business page. So this is what I'm saying. You need a personal account first to then be able to create and manage business pages. And in my case, it's all of these. If you click on the top right corner, how many of you do have at least one your pages? Raise your hand. A couple of you. Okay. If you don't have that, 
uh, you might be using Facebook wrong, perhaps. So the way we get this is we have here, create a page or manage a page. Manage a page and see more is the same thing. But I have my personal account and then I log in and I want to go manage this client. So I would click on it, I would go manage it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest, just like on every other day, for you to create an account just like I'm about to, so you can learn and see those different nuances. And this stuff changes all the time. You're going to see perhaps if you created this your Facebook business page a year ago and you haven't really used it, it might be a good idea to create a brand new one like I'm about to do, learn what we're about to do and then apply it either to your old one or let this new one be the one that takes over. So I will go to create page and if you want to use your existing one just wait a moment for us to get there. I will click create page. We have six big categories of what our page should be about and at the top it says create a page create a Facebook page to build a closer relationship with your audience and customers so again all of social media the point of it is to reach an audience it's marketing you need to decide which of these you best fit into because you can make a Facebook page about anything literally for your business organization nonprofit you can technically make a Facebook page for every one of your pro of your products. Coca-Cola does this, for example. The Coca-Cola company is a big company that has Coca-Cola, Diet Coke, Powerade, Dasani Water, all of that. So Coca-Cola has a separate business page for all of those products. Because the people that drink, you know, Powerade drink it for some reason, and the people that drink Coca-Cola drink Coca-Cola for some reason. So you want to target that audience. You've got communities and causes, public figures, entertainment. If you're going to select local business or place, this one is going to require some verification. Because what's to stop your competitor from coming to Facebook and claiming your business on Main Street? What's to stop them is that there's going to be a verification process phone number, for example. Facebook wants to verify that the person that is trying to claim this business in the real world is the right person. So if right now you're trying to claim your business on Facebook, you put a phone here, most likely it'll want to call the business to verify you are the legitimate owner. That's what stops your competitor from claiming your place on Facebook. You're not at your business at the moment, so you might not, want, you might not be able to answer the phone to verify. So for the moment, even if you have a local business, I would recommend to do the company or organization. You don't have to verify a location. We've got categories and a bunch to choose from. I'm going to do once again my fictional Victor's Bakery. So that in my case would be food and beverages. Company name, and this is the name of your business as it will appear on Facebook. That's not the address. That's not your address on Facebook. You'll claim that a little bit later. But choose a uh, category and type a name and then get started. Again, the page terms in there tells you if you're going to use Facebook legitimately. You're not going to impersonate people. You're not going to go against community guidelines. Etc. And that option that I chose there, like almost anything else, can be changed. So if you chose the wrong and people can create Facebook pages on anything, uh, companies, causes, etc., frivolous things. Uh, I remember a few years ago someone created uh, some page where it was about, um, I think it was something like, uh, my wife agreed that if I get one million likes we can name our first child Megatron. Mm -hmm. And so they ended up getting more than one million likes. I don't know if that child was named Megatron, maybe Jonathan Megatron Smith, but uh, you can make a Facebook about everything and anything. Depending on what you chose, you may get more or less of these. I have about 
profile picture, add to favorites, and preferred page audience. Add a description and website to improve the ranking of your page in search. Facebook is a huge entity. It's got 1.59, it's got 1.6 billion users worldwide. The population of the world is 7 billion. So one and a half out of ten out of seven people in the world use Facebook to some degree. It keeps getting bigger. I remember when they crossed the one billion mark. Uh, but it keeps getting bigger. It's got all of this runaway momentum. It may plateau, it may not. Who knows? There have been many quote unquote Facebook killers throughout the years. Um, None of them have been able to do so, perhaps with the exception to some degree of YouTube. YouTube has also about 900 million users. So simply in terms of users, there's a lot of, face there's a lot of YouTube users. Um, so for good and for bad, YouTube is this big entity that as a company, I think it's very valuable. As a person, and this is just my personal opinion, I don't like Facebook. I think it's far too intrusive but as a business platform, I think it's great. And therefore here, you have a spot. How can you get people to find you? This is the double-edged sword that I'm going to be talking about. There's so many people and businesses on Facebook. You're going to be yet another bakery, yet another web designer, yet another realtor, yet another realtor in San Diego specializing in zip code 91911. You're going to be yet another of something. There's so much competition, and uh, it's sort of like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, Facebook is the big platform. You need to be on Facebook. Facebook gets bigger. Therefore, you are a needle in a haystack. And what Facebook is going to try to do to various degrees is help you get found by the right people, the right customers. So take advantage of this spot right here. Tell people what your page is about. This is a place to think about writing, to think about in terms of SEO, search engine optimization, in terms of keywords and phrases to get found. You have 155 characters to write stuff here that will help you get found. And I'm not saying literally keywords, I'm not saying bakery, comma, vegan, comma, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying that. I'm saying write real words, real sentences, thinking in terms of what people might be searching for. San Diego-based uh, bakery founded in 1989 in the heart of East Lake, California. I'm putting in here keywords, California, bakery, East Lake. We specialize in healthy snacks and classic recipes. I'm putting in words and phrases about things that people could search for. Because every network has search. You're searching within Facebook, within Pinterest, within YouTube. So you have to think in terms of optimizing to get found on Facebook. And this applies on every other network we've talked about. You want to fill in that biography for Twitter. You want to fill in your biography on uh, Google+, and when we get to Pinterest and YouTube, because people are going to search in the network. You should try to use every character that you can. You have 155. You can add a website, so it says put your website here, or your Instagram, or Twitter, or anything else. So you can put any kind of link there. Yes? Only one link? Yes, see it ask you to fill in an address. So if I put victor.com, comma, john.com, if I try to proceed, it'll say just one. So here I would put in uh, some address. Um, I think we can put an address up here, but I don't think it'll be active. Let me give that a try. After we publish it, I'll check if that's active or not. Uh, so here I would put in your address, and uh, Facebook is starting to roll this out. I used to be able to say this safely, but now I can't. 
I used to say, well, you still need your you still need your website because you can't buy anything directly on Twitter. You can't buy anything directly on Facebook. You can't buy anything directly on Pinterest. You still have to lead people back to your website. I've been seeing that Facebook is starting to roll out the feature. I haven't explored it enough because um, there's only so many hours in the day. But Facebook is starting to roll out the feature that there is a buy button on the Facebook homepage, your Facebook homepage. So as I educate myself more on that, I could speak more about it. But I still would recommend to put in your website address to guide people to your website. Whatever feature, yes. I was just asking if you're doing one based on a page for a public figure, you could, and that is valuable. But on another screen, there's going to be a setting where you fill that in. Actually, okay. it asks you, and very few people need this, but it looks like you will need this. There is a spot that says you are the official page of X, and you fill that in on a separate screen. It doesn't hurt to put it here also if you uh, if you have the space for it so I would still put your website address here to lead people back to it because even whatever sort of shopping cart or whatever that Facebook gives you here uh, I'm sure it's not going to be as customizable as it could be as your home page so I would still put your home page depending on various factors I get the option choose a unique Facebook address that is, choose your Facebook custom URL. You might not get that. Uh, mine lets me choose it right away. If I don't choose it here, I will get a rather cumbersome name, like Google+. If it lets me choose it, I might want to, but be careful here. Uh, I believe it will only let you change it once after this. It's very stingy. If you add a Facebook name, it doesn't let you change it very often. And you might not want to add a Facebook name, especially if you're simply creating this account right now as a test for these, for these features. You can add this later. So I won't choose a Facebook name at the moment. It's a made-up company anyway. I'll save my info. There's a spot to add your logo. If you don't add your logo, you'll get the generic white flag logo. Isn't that pretty ironic? What's the meaning of a white flag usually? Surrender. So surrender to Facebook. <laughs> so you want to change that at some point with your logo because, again, that's going to be part of your branding. I don't have a logo with me to upload at the moment, so I'll do it later. I'll skip it. And then we get a spot that says add to favorites. You can choose this if you like. I usually skip it. What this is saying is when you log in as your when you log in with your email, it'll take you to your personal account. If you quickly want to get to this business page, you can add it to your favorites and it'll appear for you on the left side. I never really pay attention to it there. I always log in and just jump directly to the triangle and select it. The reason I do this is because a few years ago, um, to my horror, I described I or I experienced that if you clicked on your company from your favorites, it didn't actually log you into your company as an administrator. It kept you as you, the person. And there were at least once or twice that I accidentally posted to a business page, a client's business page, as me, as Victor. And that's not what I needed to do. I needed to post as the client to the client page. And that was because I had selected the business page from favorites rather than from the triangle. I don't know if they fix that. I don't want to chance it. So I skip this. I don't put my business in the favorites because I know it happened at least once, maybe twice, that it did it wrong. They might have fixed it. I don't know. I'm not going to chance it. So I'm going to skip this in the way that I'm sure that I'm doing it the right way is by going up to the triangle and selecting the page. So I'll skip favorites. I get screen number four, preferred page audience. 
If you didn't create a page like I'm doing right now, you will be able to access this later on your existent page. But I have seen, unfortunately, when I teach this class all the time, people that have created their Facebook page a year ago or two or whatever can't get to this screen. I don't know, they don't sometimes they don't they don't add this screen to a to a grandfathered page. That's annoying. Uh, so you may or may not see this, but right now if you create it from scratch you will see this. This is a very valuable screen. Tell us about uh, the people you'd most like to connect with. Anyone can find your page, but we'll do our best to put it in front of the people who matter to you most. This is Facebook trying to help us to some degree to reach the right audience. Again, 1.6 billion people. Well even if we cut it down to just you know, the population of US users, that's hundreds of millions of users. If we cut it down the, to the population of San Diego users, that's still millions of users. So you're going to be a needle in a haystack. You're not going to be found easily. Facebook is trying to help you here. Who are the people you're trying to reach? There's various options here. Locations. Enter the countries or states or zip codes where the people you most want to connect with are located. Note that any city and zip locations aren't available in all countries. You know, they don't have zip codes in Australia, I guess. So everyone in this location, people who live in this location, recently in this location, traveling in this location. Again, people give away so much information to these networks, and this is very valuable for us. Let's say I'm some sort of, you know, uh, travel agency, and I want to sell vacation packages. I want to sell vacation packages to San Diego. I want to sell my services to people in Seattle, Washington, D.C., Chicago, whatever. I want to sell my travel packages. Come to sunny San Diego. Facebook lets me target my content to people who are traveling in this location, meaning, if you put your mouse over it, meaning people whose most recent location is within the selected area, but whose home is more than 125 miles away. So how does it know that? Again, we give away so much information without even knowing it. So Facebook knows this person lives in Seattle and they're traveling in San Diego this weekend. Let's show your travel agency content to them to help you reach them. People who have been in this area but not necessarily on vacation, let's say, people who live here or just anyone in this location. Whatever makes sense to you, and this will not quite be applicable for everyone, because let's say I am an author and I want everyone in an English-speaking country to buy my book. So that's all over the world. So I'm going to include everyone. I can do include or exclude. Sometimes there's a product that I sell, alcohol, for example, that I cannot sell on every country. So I'm going to exclude some countries. Um, for my page won't appear there because I can't sell my product there. And I can do locations. So countries, let's say my product is going to be uh, targeted in the United States and Australia. So my content will most easily, to some, to various degrees, be visible to people in the U.S. and Australia. Specifically, let's say Darwin, Australia. Oh, there's a Darwin, California, also, and Argentina. So here I'm targeting uh, U.S. Darwin, Australia, and cancel that. Let's say I'm getting very local. Let's say I want to target people in Chula Vista. Well, I'm supposed to be East Lake based, so let's say East Lake, California. Yes, you you should be able to. You should get another box here, and you should just fill in another, another another one here. So. Let's say I'm also filling in Quito, Ecuador. So yep, I'm doing East Lake, California, and Quito, Chile. 
you should have what's that I think it's only going to let you do let's say I want to do another city in Chile which would be Santo Domingo I think at that point it will take away no it no. yeah it might not be perfect um, especially for multiple locations so if it's not letting you it's not gonna let you but it should let you do more than more than one question okay so uh, if I'm doing East Lake I have then the option what uh, what range because I did East Lake and notice it's still going out further up to San Diego downtown I'm getting up close to Escondido, going down to Mexico, over to the east, Hamul, and, and such. So that's at a 25 mile radius. But if I really just want to target it down to 10 miles, let's see if we can do less than 10. No, 10 is minimum, 50 is maximum. So it's going to reach this far up to El Cajon, La Mesa, just about downtown San Diego, Chula Vista, Imperial Beach little bit of Tijuana. Let's say I also want to do um, Carlsbad. So right here I'm doing Carlsbad and uh, Chula Vista. And what you can also do is drop a pin. Let's say Ramona. So if I click drop a pin and then click the location, it doesn't necessarily have to be attached to a named place or zip code, but I can drop a pin now there. I'm targeting those big areas. We can target ages. The minimum age is 13. You have to be at least 13 to use Facebook. So if there are little kids using Facebook, they shouldn't be, and I'm going to tell. So it's between at least 13 and up. And uh, here you can, you can target it. These settings that we're adding here are applying to all your content in general. But later we'll see we can target our content on a post-by-post -post basis. We can have this particular ad that we're putting on Facebook, this particular picture targeted to a demographic that is not this, we are able to target it. And you might not quite know who you're, who you're going to target, but this can be changed at any point, and you should think about targeting. Yes? So I suppose you're getting into ads later? Yes. And so you should target, you should have a demographic that you're trying to reach because that's one of the big downfalls of a business. When we talk to a client and we uh, need to do some work for them in social media or build them a website and such, one of the questions we have to answer early on with the client is, who's your target audience? Who's your demographic? Who are you selling to? And it's always a problem when the client says, everyone, everyone's going to want my product. That's the wrong answer, unfortunately, because no, not everyone's going to want your product. I give the example that a few years ago we talked to a person that, you know, we talked to them and they said, who's your target audience? And he said, everyone. When we, ta when we talked more with them, we figured out, no, not everyone, because he's selling baby strollers. So literally, not everyone is going to want that product. Uh, we figured out eventually with that client that who they needed to target or who we wanted to target were first-time parents, first-time Latino parents. That's a target audience that you can attain, rather than everyone which is worthless. Okay, every parent, that's worthless too. Every new parent, getting better. Latino parents, young parents, whatever. So the more specific you are, the better. And that's what this page is asking us to do. Men and women, or everyone, who's your, who's your audience there? And then very valuable here, well, let me back up to interest in a moment. Languages, if I'm trying to target English, UK, US are all. I also do, for example, Filipino, Spanish. So 
Spanish all and Spain. So here then my content will be targeted more to those languages. So then here I've got interests. This is super valuable. Again, we give so much information to Facebook without thinking about it. Every time we like something on Facebook, every time we post about something on Facebook as a person, every time we talk about something on Facebook, we are telling Facebook usually we like that, we enjoy it, we are interested in that content. So here, for what to fill in here, I recommend go to Browse. If you can start typing up, you can start typing a keyword. But here's another way to do it first. If you click Browse. We have these big ideas of business, entertainment, food. And if you hover over a topic, 1.1 billion people have expressed an interest in food. So I can select food as the big idea here, or go deeper. Beverages, 659 million people have expressed an interest there. Cooking cuisine, food. Let's look under cooking. I can open that. Baking. That's that's good. Victor's Bakery. That's interesting. So if I choose baking, 155 million and a half people have an interest in this. So if I select that. Is it better for different There is a fine line. You don't want to put so many because then you're diluting yourself. Just like saying, everyone's my target audience. You do want to think about putting three to five or so um, interests. If you're doing five, six, seven, eight, ten, you're, you're spreading yourself out too much. So I would recommend three to five interests. As I start browsing, it might give me suggestions. Let's see what suggestions. Frying, barbecue flavor, culinary art, roasting, cakes, cakes and bakeries, pies. This might mention things like, let's say, America's Top Chef, or uh, what other cooking shows? The Joy of Cooking. You know, it may be sh giving you a variety of topics because there is a cooking channel Facebook page which people like. There is the Sam the Cooking Guy page that people like. Every time people are clicking like on that, Facebook is gathering that info and that's where these numbers are coming from. 56, so there, according to Facebook there are 56 million soup lovers on Facebook. Great, I want to target them. Cheesecake, bread, again I would not go through here and add 10 different topics. I would try to target a little bit more, five maximum or so. Yes. Yes, try to get the ones with, with, uh, with more, but even like, okay, should I choose the 23 million one or the 1 million one? They're both good. They have a lot of potential people, but still, you're, we're going to super target eventually later. Yes. So we're not targeting for ads right now? No. So when we're choosing these, does that mean that Facebook tries to show our page to these populations? Yes. So when, for example, someone logs into Facebook, they see something on the cooking channel, and they click like, eventually Facebook starts to suggest, why not also like this? So that's us getting a foothold on other people's views, timelines, to get a like. See another suggestion here. Flavor. Sure, people love flavor. 144 million. So I'll add flavor. Yes? I don't see the uh, downside for public spending in the market. It doesn't cost you any more. It doesn't, but uh, it's still, you're just not, you're not reaching perhaps as effectively the audience that you want to find. And it may depend on case-by-case -case basis, too. Uh, in my experience, in the various clients that I've worked with, usually it has resulted to be a little more specific rather than be as broad as possible. So sure, we can add 10, 15 interests here, but it might not be as effective for every client. So I can speak from experience and what I've read and such and educated myself. But it may be that in your particular case, great, it worked for you to have a lot. 
but in my experience, um, that's what I would suggest. Try to target a bit more. So I'm going to click Save. This brings me to my home page, and at the moment, my Facebook address is facebook.com victors bakery gibberish. I didn't claim the custom name, so it gives me that name. It is a valid name which I can share via email and such. But I eventually would want facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. If you didn't get the option to claim your name, there are various factors, and they change this all the time. Sometimes you have to have at least 30 likes before you can claim a name. That's to kind of weed out the spam. Other times I've seen people be able to claim their name with 20 likes. And other times I've seen people to be able to claim their name right now with zero likes. So I don't know exactly why they changed this up, but traditionally it's been 30 likes. If you are able to claim your name and it's, and it's uh, reasonable for you to do so, then, then do it. You cannot change it very often, unfortunately. I think maybe once or twice. So be careful about claiming a name. I created my account. It might give me a quick tour. I'm going to have various tabs at the top here, which we'll look at later. Next. Remember, a business page has likes. A personal page, personal profile has friends. So it says like your own page at least to show that there's been one like. So I like my own page, great. And I've got a brand new page to work with. At the top right corner, the black triangle now should show you there. If you've got more than one to work with, it's only going to show you three at a time. But now if you click the black triangle and go to Manage Pages, all your pages will be there. You can switch back and forth between your pages up there on that triangle. We'll go over all the general anatomy of the Facebook interface, then we'll talk about some settings, we'll talk about posting, we'll talk about the Facebook secret weapon, all of that stuff. Any questions so far? Okay. So, we have the top blue bar at the top with search, and then you have your various tools. Go back to your personal home page, all of that. Um, notifications up on the top there. Below that you've got a white bar which has pages, messages, notifications, insights, publishing tools. You might not have insights. I'll just confirm here. You might not have insights depending on various factors. The most common is if you've got a brand new page without any activity, you might not have insights. So if you don't have insights, that's okay. Uh, don't worry about it just yet, but I'll talk about what insights are a little later. Page takes you back always to the home page, the home screen of your page. This is what people will see. When people find Victor's Bakery on Facebook, this is what they'll see, which is at the moment nothing. We'll have messages to look at. These are, you can have private messages going back and forth between you and your customers. Again, we'll look at all of this in detail, but just as an overview, you can have private messages. Notifications, this will tell you who liked your page, who commented on your page, all of that stuff. Insights, you may or may not have, but eventually insights will, will show you all of this detail, statistics, analytics about your page, the days that you posted and how much reach it got, and your, remember those keywords of, of uh, impressions and conversions? So I mentioned it before, but anyone remember what's an impression? I think I heard someone say, views on your content. What's a conversion? I think I heard someone say, actions on your content. So when someone actually clicks 
on something, follows a link, or gives a like, or does some action. That's a conversion. When someone simply sees your post or your picture or your video and without actually acting upon it, that's an impression. And then you've got um, uh, CTR, which is a uh, click through rate. Click through rate. CTR, which is uh, conversions divided by impressions. How many actual actions you got divided by how many people saw something? That's, that's going to give you some percentage. Let's say 1.7%. So that's one way to measure your return on investment, how effective was something. That photo was very effective. It had a CTR of 2, as opposed to this one that had a 0 0.7. That particular picture, by one measurement, was more effective than the other. You had a higher CTR. You had higher ROI, return on investment. You're going to see all that data under Insights. Publishing tools. This is a screen that will tell you all about what posts you've made, scheduled post drafts, all of this stuff, which we'll look at in detail. And this is where you can see all your content at a glance. We have the settings screen. We'll look at some important settings here a little later. We've got a help. So you can go to the Help Yourself Center. You can go to the Community Help Forum. You can send feedback to Facebook. Let's look at some settings that I think are important for us to, to look at. So wherever you're at here on your Facebook page, you're on your Facebook page because it says the name of your page right up there. You can vaguely click on the settings for your page. So I'm going to skip a bunch that I don't think make, uh, make any difference, but I'll mention some very important ones. Page visibility, the page has been published. You can change that back to unpublished. Let's say you're working on it until you, you update your features or something. I hardly ever use this, but if you'd like to turn off your Facebook page so no one sees it, you can do that there. All of these will have an edit button. Visitor posts. One of the great things about Facebook to you, why you would use it as a business, is because you can control your message. You can really guide your content, uh, guide the direction of your content. If you go on Twitter, you start a hashtag, you want to build momentum for your brand and such, it could get away from you. The good and the bad about Facebook is that it's a very open platform. Um, it's open because you can reach more customers much more directly than Facebook. But the negative is that your message could be co-opted very easily. It could get away from you, and there's no recourse that you have to a, very, to a, a large degree. Uh, the example is that it happens so many times with companies or other entities that they try to do something on Twitter and it gets away from them. A few years ago, and it happens kind of often, um, one example is um, the, the New York Police Department wanted to do some community outreach. So on Twitter, they started their, their hashtag and their post. I forgot the exact hashtag, but they said, hey everyone, share your police stories, hashtag it MyNYCPD. And it got away from them when people started to post a lot of photos of police brutality, police oversight, and overreach, and all of that. And okay, it got away from them. They can't really do much about it. That hashtag has been co-opted. On Facebook, you can do something similar. But the thing is that you will be able con to control what people write. You will be able to see, oh, someone posted something very negative or off-topic on that message of mine. Delete. I can delete that. You can really uh, guide your message for good and for bad. Um, one way to stay ahead of that is here, visitor posts. The default is that any crazy person can write any crazy thing on your Facebook page. If you go to this option here, visitor posts, and click edit, you have the option, let anyone write anything. It could be crazy people, it could be not crazy people or disable posts. So no one will be able to write anything on your page if you do that. I don't recommend that. 
I think that's too draconian. I think that's too harsh. Remember, I talk about having the dialogue on social media, a back and forth. I do recommend, however, a good medium is turn on review posts by other people before they are published to the page. That way any crazy person can still write what they want, but it will not appear onto the page until you approve it. That also means you're going to need to approve the good comments. But I think this might be better for you to manage to keep everything on message. You'll be able to manage all of that under the activity log, which you can get to it in various points, but you've got publishing tools and you've got notifications. So you'll be notified. John Smith wrote on your post, on your page. So then you can go to your notifications and then approve or deny it, delete it. So that's off by default. I would recommend to turn it on or disable comments or leave it on as is. And if you do activate that, remember to save. When we were creating the page, there was the option to target our posts to an audience in general we can target our content to individuals, demographics as well, if we turn it on. It's off by default here. Well, whatever we set up a moment ago will apply always. Well, sometimes I need to change my targeting on a post-by-post -post basis. So I recommend you go to Newsfeed Audience Visibility and activate Allow Newsfeed Audience Selection and Post Visibility. So this is, when you create a post, you can choose which people see it. That's like on a case-by-case -case basis targeting. Save that. So I do recommend activate that. Messages, that's up to you. The default is that now someone can go to your page, there's a button that says send a message, someone can go to your page and send your page a private message. It's like emails, so to speak. You get, you get these internal communications. That's up to you to decide if you want it or not. Uh, a reason you might not want it is because any crazy person can send you any crazy thing. Why you might, why you might want it is because then you can deal with problems out of the spotlight. You can get a, um, a customer that's being belligerent and such into a private message instead of that cluttering up your home page. You can deal with customer service privately rather than out publicly. So that's up to you to decide what to do there. The default I think is fine. Tagging is fine. Other tagging, that's fine. Country restrictions, that's up to you. Would you like your page to be visible by every country in the world or not? Would you like your content to be viewed by all ages or do you need to make it to be at least 18 years old, 21, whatever? Do you need to moderate some words? If you go there, basically you're going to add a, bis a bunch of words uh, that are forbidden. And what happens there? You can add keywords that you'd like to block. If one of these keywords is used in a post or comment, it will automatically automatically be marked as spam. Uh, so what this is going to be is if someone is writing something and they used one of these blocked words, their post will not show up. But you've already got that set up most likely with the previous uh, option up here. I think that's redundant. Profanity filter, it's off, so any, uh, any person can write any darn thing that they want here. But if you would like to change that, profanity filter, medium and strong, Facebook determines what to block by using the most common and reported words and phrases marked offensive by the community. So the people of Facebook are saying that's offensive, that's profane, etc., and that's how these are applied. 
so that's up to you to decide. Well, if you did not have, both of these are basically negated by the previous option here. Because you've already said that everything is going to be moderated, these two sort of don't quite matter. But if you didn't have it to moderate comments, then these two might work in that no profanity will show up on your page until you approve it. Similar suggestions, that's fine, I would leave it on. Uh, basically your page will be shown to other people. If someone likes one bakery, they might say, you might be interested in this other bakery. I want that. If you don't, you can turn it off, but it's on by default, so I think that's good. Do you, know, do you want to write posts in multiple languages? Again, that's up to you. People can comment on your posts, but remember they will be moderated. And then people can like posts, so people can rank, not post comments. You've written a post, someone commented on the post, and other people can like that comment. They're sort of giving approval or ranking people's comments. Would you like here, most recent comments are shown by default or most relevant comments. This one is off. And what relevant is, comments with the most likes or replies will appear first below your posts. If this setting is not checked, your, your page will display the most recent. So if it's not on, whatever people write on your business page will just show up chronologically. And there's no wrong answer here. I sort of lean toward turning it on, because the point of this is someone writes a reply or someone writes something on your page and it's funny, it's interesting, it's on topic, it, it's positive, someone else sees it, gives that a like, someone else gives that a like, so the good stuff in theory bubbles up because more people are liking people's good stuff. And so I kind of like that because then it automatically bubbles to the top and there's a lot of group mentality on everything that we do everything that people do, there's a lot of group mentality. If you're seeing a lot of positivity, more positivity probably comes. If you're seeing a lot of negativity, more negativity probably comes. So here you can guide the message a bit more. So I would recommend that one, it's, but it's another optional one. If you want to download an archive of your page, you can do that there. If you have more than one page, this happens sometimes that uh, you created a page a while ago, never used it, now you're creating one seriously, but that other page has three likes that you don't want to lose, so you can merge that page with this page you're creating now. Or maybe other people created it for you on Amazon. You can go through that process there. If you say, never mind, I don't want to get into Facebook, I'll stick with Pinterest, and delete your page. So those are our general settings. Any questions on these before we go on? Well, this name, when you created the page, multiple entities on Facebook can have that name. So you can get that name, sure. But if you claimed your name for your address, that might be harder to get. So that's why you want to make sure you're using the legitimate page and you're using it to its full potential. Um, because it can be tricky sometimes. But there is help and we can contact the help and they get they do contact you via email and you can get some of these issues resolved that are more complicated. Yes? So before you said that um, you could designate the page as the official page, mm -hmm. I was looking for where to do that and I didn't find it in the signing section. It might not be here, uh, it's probably when we get to this it'll probably eventually be in the page info. We've got messaging options here. What's here? Everything. Everything's good. Okay, here. Well, we'll take a quick look at this messaging. 
Again, people can send your page private messages. What you could do under this screen is enable away messages and instant replies. Create a message that's automatically sent to people when your status is set to away. So if you're not during if you're not active during business hours and someone messages your page, you can enable some message that will be sent to them. Hi, John. Thanks for your message. We are not here right now, but we'll get back to you soon. Or you can edit that. Instant replies are a good way to let people know that you'll respond to them soon. So if you activate that, again, that'll give some sort of quick reply to people. This is up to you to decide to use or not. I just read a stat a couple of days ago. People expect that if they message a page that they will reply to them between zero and four hours between the time that they message them, even on weekends. But the average response time is 10 hours. So businesses in general perhaps are not doing a good job of replying back to people. This is all marketing. This is all customer service. So we need to think about that. That's something that may now start to take up our time. We're running our business, but we've also got people asking us questions on Facebook. Again, this social media stuff could be a full-time job. One way to possibly help you with that is here. I don't have time to reply to people within those four hours. So I can have an instant reply that says, thank you for messaging us. We'll get back to you within one day. And then hopefully you will get back to them within one day. That could be negative for you if you keep telling everyone, we're going to reply in 24 hours, and you reply in three days. So if you do use any of these, make sure to follow through. We'll skip page info for the moment. That's another complicated one. We'll get back to it in a moment. Post attributions. This is now how it seems that they fixed the problem that there was a few years ago where I was posting as Victor onto Victor's Bakery. No, I need Victor's Bakery to post to Victor's Bakery. And this is where you can set that attribution. It should be set properly that the business is going to post as the business to the business. You probably don't want the person to post to the business. Again, one person can create and manage many businesses. I don't want, so this client here doesn't want Victor posting to the business. She wants Elsa posting to the business, not Victor. So you could double check it here, but it should be set properly. Who's posting to this business? The business. And there's going to be another little indicator that we'll see later. Keep an eye out for that in, in a little bit. Notifications. Um, this is up to you to decide how you want to do this. Let people let me know as a manager what happens here. Give me a notification as soon as it happens, or give me a digest or don't notify me. You know, send this to me, text messages, all of that. That's up to you to decide how you want to be notified. Page roles. This is how you have multiple people helping you manage this thing. Right now, I created it for this client, so I'm an administrator. I want to add more people to help run this, so I can add them here. Type a name or an email. And yes, this does assume they have a Facebook page first. So if you're giving other people access and they don't have a Facebook, they'll need to go through the process of creating a Facebook, then they will have access. Then you'll need to teach them how to use Facebook. So be careful who you do this for because also you need to set what sort of role. The default is an editor. If I add John Smith here, John can edit the page, send messages and publish, create ads, see which admin created a post, and view stats. A higher level is an admin, which can do all of that as well as assign more page roles, add more people as a manager. That may be too much power. Uh, I believe also, as an admin, one admin can kick out another admin. So if you added someone else into your company as an admin, in theory, 
when they get fired and are disgruntled, in theory, they can go in and remove you from your own page if they're an admin. Editor is probably going to work 99% of the time. We have other levels that you can check out on your own. Analyst has the lowest level. They can only see who posted something and view stats. They can't post anything. You can view various stats about the people who have liked your page. Uh, under this screen here, people on other pages, so you can see who's liking your page. You, then you can try to target more directly. This person showed an interest in my page. Maybe I'll send them something. Maybe I'll get more in contact with them. Get the ball rolling for something more to turn that impression into a conversion. You will be able to ban people from looking at your page if they are extremely annoying and such. They will be listed here. Here's your preferred page audience. So if you have created this page previously before today, and you're saying, I don't have that page where you set your demographics, you should have it here. Settings, preferred page audience, edit. I do see sometimes that people don't have this, and I can't say anything about it. It's there or not. I don't know what sort of setting or what has happened. You might have to contact Facebook if you don't see that screen here. But I often see it with pages that have existed before a year or more. They've added this targeting feature within the last year, so it might not have been added to every page yet. Apps. Um, we can add various apps. We've got a timeline about photos, etc. Sometimes you might see in the tab over here a map or sign up and such. Those are apps. So we'll be able to add more of those and manage them here. <coughs> What's that? Well, it depends on the app. You might have an app that's a map, so therefore it'll show a map of your location. It may give driving directions. It may have some sort of donate button. So there's different apps that do different things, but they give you extra features. They're sort of like plugins on WordPress. The downside of apps is that usually they are made by other people besides Facebook, and therefore they all have their own features, their own settings, their own downsides. I personally don't recommend to use many apps because sometimes these apps are created and then they're abandoned. The developer doesn't really update them anymore, and that could, be, that could cause your page to be less secure. You can search at the top here. You can search through Facebook, maybe Map App, Sign Up App, and you'll get a list of them that you can read upon it, and then there'll be a button to install it or add it. If we had the time for it, in this class, one of the days that we would spend is talking about Instagram. Instagram is a network that came out in 2012 or so, 2011. It's a very popular photo sharing app, and it's growing and growing and growing, and at the moment it has more active users than Twitter. Instagram has about 400 million active users, Twitter has about 320 million active users. Uh, Twitter has been around a decade, Instagram has been around five years. So Instagram has taken off. And in the beginning, Instagram was so promising and Facebook saw its promise that they bought Facebook. Uh, Facebook bought Instagram for about a billion dollars, literally. And so uh, I was on Instagram from the beginning. I got an account like on the first week of Instagram. So I'm pulling out my hipster card. I was on Instagram before you. Uh, and um, we were using Instagram back in the beginning. Instagram was only for iPhone users, so even more hipster. And then eventually it got to, to Android phone and Windows phone, so everyone was using Instagram. Um, and then eventually Facebook bought them. And I remember everyone was like, that's it, it's over. Facebook is going to get co op, or Facebook is going to co opt Instagram, it's all over, it's going to get ads all over the place. I'm not on Facebook because I don't like Facebook, that's why I'm on Instagram. And surprisingly, Facebook didn't really change it. Facebook didn't meddle with Instagram, really. 
Um, they left it alone basically until very, very recently, in the last six months or so, which is that now you can put ads on Instagram via Facebook. So we'll talk about ads and such a little later. This is very powerful. 400 extra million users that you can reach. There is a whole discussion to have about that, but I'm just showing you here. Your company can also target people on Instagram. You can show pictures and videos on Instagram to reach more of an audience. And I notice here, they're still showing the old icon. There was so much uh, snark that happened when about four days ago Instagram changed their, their icon. People were saying it's ugly and basic and dumb and the colors, this is the black and white version, but the color version looks like a mishmash of rainbows. People were making so much fun of the new Instagram logo. This is serious business after all. But the old logo is still there, so Facebook has forgotten to update their own their own website. Yeah. Someone got creative and said, hey, let's try a new logo. People got used to the old one. Yep, time to mix everything up again. So there's more to it, too. It says, while people seem focused on its new logo, Instagram is in the process of rolling out algorithm-based feeds to some users, a change with potentially huge consequences for brands and influencers. Yeah, that's happening a lot. Facebook did it a while ago uh, in that it used to be that you log into Facebook personal and the latest posts from your friends and family showed up. Then they changed it that the most relevant stuff shows up. People hated that, but then they got used to it. Um, it seems to have worked for Facebook, so now Twitter is doing it. So now Instagram is doing it. I don't like it. I want to see the latest things, but um, things are changing. And so now it's coming to Instagram that the best or the latest or the most relevant, whatever the algorithm deems it to be, is going to be shown first. And that could be negative for us as brands, as companies, because now we might not be guaranteed that our content is seen as visibly as before. Now that already happened years ago on Facebook. So that's the, what I'm saying about the double-edged sword of Facebook, which we will address, which applies also to Instagram. So that's a change that's coming to Instagram and others. Featured, you could show, this is what I'm saying about Victor manages Victor's Bakery, so does Janet. But do we want to show that? The default is no, we're not going to show who owns the page, who manages the page. If you would like to show that, you could. A page can like a page. Just like on Twitter, a business page can follow a business page. Just like on Google+, Plus, your page can follow a page. So if on Facebook your page follows a page, you can show that. And like on Twitter and Google+, Plus and every other network, it is valuable for your business page to follow another business page because, again, for the various things we've talked about, for inspiration, for reconnaissance and intelligence and all of that. And if you'd like to show that Victor's Bakery also followed Mary Calendar, you can show that if you'd like. Page support, you can go in there, get in contact with tech support on Facebook, and then um, get your issues resolved. Activity log, this is where it's going to show you everything that's happened, and if you've gotten messages, if you need to moderate things, you can see it this way, comments, all of that. There's lots of settings to look at. There's still another page full of settings, which we'll look at in a moment after the break. But any questions so far on what we've looked at here? Yes? So you were saying the business page can follow the business page. I don't know if I've tried that before, but um, when I log into Facebook, I, it's generally putting me as myself. Hmm. Is it difficult to change it from yourself to um, your business page if you're an admin on your business page to follow another business page? We're going to see that there's a little icon for attribution so that we can switch back and forth between who 
is doing the action. It can be very easy to accidentally be as the wrong person. Um, from the latest changes, I'm seeing they're making it a little harder now to see which page is doing what. So uh, it may still be difficult which page is doing what. We will see in a bit to the way to confirm which which is doing it, but we'll we'll see it eventually. Yes. So let's uh, let's take our first break. When we come back, we'll look at a couple more settings, what to post, how to post, other things. It's seven twenty-seven. We'll be back at uh, seven thirty-seven, and we'll go on. <laughs>